Hi there, Joshua Johnson here. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about how to choose the right hiking and mountaineering boots, as well as give my three best tips on what to look for when shopping around. Let's get started. Firstly, I just want to point out that in my previous video, how to choose boots for crampons, I talked about picking the right boots for crampons. Now, technically speaking, you don't really choose boots for crampons or crampons for boots. You choose equipment for terrain and conditions. So the best thing to do is figure out what sort of trip you want to do and what sort of environment you'll be doing it in, and then choosing the appropriate gear for that situation. For example, in Minnesota, where I'm originally from, the terrain there is quite flat and winters there can be brutally cold regularly getting down to minus 40 Celsius, which is about the same as minus 40 Fahrenheit. So for a winter trip, you need to have a boot system that's warm, manages moisture, and is roomy enough to move your toes around a bit to maintain circulation. Now in contrast, in New Zealand, where I currently live, you often have all four seasons in one day, through river crossings, bashing through dense rainforest, traversing a brace of terrain, crossing glaciers, and ultimately up into the snow and ice of the alpine environment. So your boot system needs to be able to cope with a much broader range of conditions. Regardless of your environment, there are a lot of characteristics to consider when choosing a set of boots. I have narrowed this list down to what are, in my experience, the three best tips. Tip number one, the boots have to fit properly and the best way to do this is to try them on. Don't buy a pair of discounted boots online with the expectation that they'll fit right. Go to an actual shop that has good customer service and knowledgeable staff and try on as many pairs of boots as you can. This way, you'll develop experience on what boots feel right for you for your own unique feet. I'll talk more on how to fit hiking boots in a separate video. Tip number two, quality. A good fitting boot doesn't necessarily have to be expensive, but in terms of quality, you tend to get what you pay for. Good boots are an investment, so by purchasing the best quality you can afford, you'll be maximizing your return on your investment. The brand of the boot isn't really that important, it's more the price point. If you pay $75 for a pair of boots, then what you'll probably get is a crappy pair of boots that will fall apart in short order. Now if you pay say $500 for a pair of boots, what you'll probably get is high quality, durable footwear that will last and last. As an example, this budget pair of Keens, 100 bucks, fell apart in two weeks. Now, all I really use them for is pack rafting and going to buy milk. Now compare those with these, La Sportiva Nepal's, high-end mountaineering boots, a thousand bucks, but they'll last for many years through the hardest conditions. What you buy as a hiker, tramper, or newcomer to using crampons and ice axe will likely be somewhere in between these two extremes. Tip number three, Fit for purpose. As a rough guideline, as the difficulty of the terrain increases, steeper, rougher, icier, so too must the durability and supportability of the boot. For rougher terrain, there are several boot features that I always look for. The outsole of the boot, also known as the sole or the bottom, should be robust enough that it can handle a lot of abrasion from stone, grit, and debris. The boot should also be tall and rigid enough to provide full ankle coverage and support. The boot should have a full rand. This rubber part here, as you can see on these anatoms, that wraps around the entire perimeter of the boot. This will help protect the outer material and prolong the boot life. The boot outer should be a leather or synthetic that's durable enough to cope with a lot of abuse and varying conditions, and there should be an absolute minimum of exposed stitching, which is generally the weakest part of most footwear. This is because stitching is easily cut or worn away by sand and rocks. As an example, on these La Sportiva Nepal's, which are admittedly for mountaineering and not hiking, there's virtually no exposed stitching whatsoever on the perimeter of the boot. Really high quality. Lastly, you want to avoid boots with mesh side or toe panels, such on these Keens here. They can be nice in summer on a walking path, but for winter conditions, the boots won't be warm enough and they won't adequately protect your feet from the sharper, stabbier items that you may come across. That about wraps it up. I hope you found this video educational. Let me know what you think. Leave a comment, leave a like, and if you found this video helpful, please subscribe to the channel for more great content. Thanks for watching and have a great day. Cheers.